Today is day 13, your body weight workout. So today we're gonna start with a dynamic warm up, move into our stretch series, go through a body weight circuit, and then move into our core circuit. For today's workout, you're gonna need a pull up bar, a resistance band, and a mat if you're working on a hard surface. If you can do pull ups unassisted, no resistance band necessary. This workout, as with every workout on the 24 7 fitness trainer, you can follow along in real time on your smartphone, tablet, computer, or television. Today, I'm gonna to be performing the workout, so try and keep up. So for the dynamic warm up, we're gonna start with jogging in place for 30 seconds, let's go. So I'm just starting at an intensity of about seven out of 10. All right, now we're gonna move right into jumping jacks. Moving right into butt kicks. All right, moving right into switch kick with arm circles. Let's finish it off with walking high knees. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into our stretch series. So I'm gonna go right into a seated floor hamstring stretch. Put my feet out in front of me. My legs are gonna be straight. I'm just gonna go right into it, grabbing my feet and dropping my head. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just shake out and go right back into it. You really wanna feel this right in the hamstring. If you can't get all the way to your feet, that's okay. You can hold the back of your calves and just make sure that your head is completely relaxed because I also want this to stretch out the upper and lower back. So let's get into it again. I'm gonna take a nice deep breath. And while you're doing this at home, use this time to really focus on what your intention is for the workout ahead. This is your time to get extremely focused and clear and, um, and get ready to do battle with these circuits.
Okay, so let's get right into the next stretch, which is a quad stretch. You can do, the, do this either standing up or sitting down. So I'm just pulling my foot right behind my quadricep and I'm driving my knee into the ground as I'm doing this. If you need assistance with balance, it's okay to find something nearby to hold on to, like a wall or anything you have available to you. Okay, go ahead and shake that out and go right back into it for stretch two. And again, when I'm doing this, I'm breathing, keeping my upper body nice and relaxed. I shouldn't be clenching or tightening anything. You really want to just stay relaxed while you're stretching. This is an opportunity to oxygenate the muscles and to get everything lengthened out to prevent injury and really focus on what's ahead. Okay, good. Check that one out. We're going to switch over to the other side. Good, go ahead and kick that leg out. Bring it back one more time. And again, my foot is directly underneath my butt. My foot is not kicking out. It's I'm driving it right behind, putting no pressure on the knee at all. All right, so let's move into our sumo squat. So I'm just gonna take a wide stance here. If you're sore at all from yesterday's workout, you may have a hard time taking a wide stance. That's okay if you need to bring it in a little bit. Let me see if I can drop down here in these shorts. So you're just gonna drop down. I'm gonna spread my feet out a little bit and I'm just gonna sit right back onto my heels. And when I do this stretch, I like to use my elbows to just press my knees out a little bit. It just gives me a little um, added resistance and stretch. Okay, good. Come up, shake it out, and get right back into it. This time, try and go a little bit deeper with this stretch. So I'm just gonna use my arms to push out my knees a little bit farther. I can feel that my left, uh, my left side is a little bit tighter than my right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of pressure to that left side to try and even these guys out. Stretching is also a great way to overcome muscle imbalances in the body. A lot of times, the way that our body develops these imbalances is because of the fact that there's certain muscles contracting on one side differently than the other, so stretching is great for combating that issue as well. Great, so let's get up, shake that out, and get right into our dynamic chest stretch. I'm just gonna swing my arms back and forth. I'm not forcing it, I'm not going crazy, I'm just feeling a little bit of a um, stretch right there in my chest. I can also feel this a little bit in my shoulders. Just trying to get blood moving into that shoulder socket and all through the chest. Good. Shake it out and go right into round two. This time I'm going a little bit deeper with the stretch. My hands are coming back a little bit further. Again, every time I'm doing a stretch, I'm trying to breathe into the stretch. I'm trying to get oxygen to those muscles, getting them ready to go to work.
All right, so let's move into the next stretch, shoulder across the chest. So I'm just gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna use this arm. I'm gonna bring my elbow right across my body. And I'm just gonna adjust my arm and bring it down a little bit. Um, I have, I'm, I'm just a little bit tight from yesterday's workout, so I can feel this more in my chest when I'm at this angle. So I'm just gonna drop a little bit lower so I can get into this belt. Okay, good, I'm gonna shake that out. Go right back into it. Let's switch it out over to the other side. So this side, my chest is a little bit better so I can hold this arm a little higher. And again, when you're stretching, you don't wanna overstretch. You don't wanna feel like you're tearing the muscle, but you definitely wanna feel enough tension to where it feels like you are definitely elongating the muscle. You don't wanna half-ass the stretch. I see a lot of people do this. You're not doing anything for yourself. It should feel slightly uncomfortable on the first, uh, the first stretch of each muscle group, which is why we do this two times, so you can get deeper on the second stretch. Good, let's shake that out. Go right back into it. Okay, good. So let's move right into our overhead tricep stretch. I'm just gonna bring my right arm back, my forearm down, I'm gonna reach across, and I'm gonna use this hand to secure my elbow against my head and just apply a little bit of pressure down on that elbow. And again, I can also feel this at my lat attachment, which is good because this can be a double whammy. If you have tight lats from pull-ups or anything else we're doing as part of this program, that's another area of the body that you wanna make sure that you're stretching. Okay, good. I'm gonna shake that side out and get right into round number two of this stretch. This time I'm gonna try and go a little bit deeper. And again, it's really helpful if you have a mirror while you're stretching um, because you wanna keep your head in a totally neutral position so that if you, can, if you can see that in a mirror, it makes it a lot easier to make sure that you're doing these stretches correctly. If not, no big deal, but it's just helpful to have that available to you. Okay, let's move on to the other side. A lot of times people ask me why I have people do each stretch two times. Our body is designed to protect itself, so anytime a muscle feels like it's being pulled or stretched, think about when you feel your ankle start to roll, your body's natural inclination is to fight against it. So by doing the stretch two times on the first stretch, you're definitely gonna feel uh, your body's a lot tighter, it's fighting you a lot more. So that second stretch, it's like, oh, it's all good, I'm not getting injured, I'm just stretching. And that's the reason for the two stretches. Okay, let's move into the second round. Keep reminding yourself to breathe while you're stretching. It's really important. Good. All right, let's move right into our next stretch, the iliopsoas stretch, one of my favorites. So I'm just gonna take this foot, I'm gonna go from 90 degrees, put it out about six inches, and then I'm just gonna lean directly into this stretch. I'm gonna keep my upper body really tall, and I'm just gonna use this hand, I'm gonna go up, 
over and back so that I can feel a nice stretch right through here. I'm gonna use this elbow to secure myself on my right leg. Good, okay. Go ahead and shake that out and roll right back into it. This time a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna actually scoop my foot out a little bit more. Yeah, so while you're stretching, you really wanna make sure that you're not distracted. You shouldn't be on your phone. You shouldn't be twisting your head, watching other people who may be in the gym or the space that you're in. You really just wanna focus on the task at hand, which is preparing yourself for the workout. Focus solely on that. Good. Okay, shake that out. We're gonna switch over to the other side. I'm gonna get right into it. So this stretch is really getting into your iliopsoas, which is the largest hip flexor of the body. If this hip flexor gets tight, it causes a ton of issues in the low back. A lot of times people think that they're having an issue in their low back and really it's just a tight iliopsoas. And it gets tight from sitting down all day at work, um, a lot of driving of the knees. So if you're running, if you're doing leg movements, pretty much every single movement that we do is um, goes through the iliopsoas. So it's extremely important to stretch out. Okay, good. Shake that out. We're gonna go into round two of this one. Okay, good, so let's move right into our low back stretch. So I'm just gonna lay right here. <sighs> and I'm just gonna relax my hands and I'm just gonna twist, bringing one knee over on this side of my body and keeping this bottom leg totally straight. This arm is gonna be flat on the ground. So I can really feel this all through my lumbar, my upper back, even parts of my shoulder as I'm letting this arm drop. And you really, you really don't wanna fight this stretch. A lot of people fight against this stretch. Just take a deep breath and just let your body do what it wants to do. Okay, good. I'll go right back to center, right back over into round two. Okay, so let's move on to the other side. I'm just gonna flip this way, do the exact same thing. So I'm bringing this knee over and down, keeping this arm nice and relaxed. And I'm keeping my head in a neutral position. The, the balance of bringing this knee over on this side of the body and keeping this hand on this side is what really creates that tension uh, through through the back. So you wanna make sure that you're not cheating and bringing this arm over or bringing it up. You wanna just let it drop on the ground. Good, so come back to center, start round two. So again, while you're going through these stretches, really be focusing on the workout ahead. Decide what your non-negotiables are. I always tell clients this at the beginning of a workout. Decide that you're not gonna give up. Decide that you're not gonna shortcut it when it gets hard. Those decisions are gonna be a huge factor when you start to get exhausted. You have to make your mind up now what you're gonna do during the core of this workout. 
Okay, good. So let's come up for the glute stretch, our final stretch. So I'm gonna bring this leg out and straight this leg over. I'm just gonna bring my knee right into my chest. Okay, let's shake that side out, go right back into it. You know, one of the things that sports really taught me is you don't just prepare to go into game day, you prepare to go into practice too. You have to decide what it is you're trying to get out of that practice because ultimately that's gonna determine how well you're gonna play in the game. And so when you're going in to do a workout, you need to get your mind in the right place. You need to say, you know what, this is what I'm gonna do, this is how hard I'm gonna push, and failing to do that, failing to prepare, as John Wooden said, is preparing to fail. Okay, good, let's switch over to the other side. Bringing this knee, again, just in. I'm trying to keep my upper body extremely straight. I find with myself, I have a tendency to wanna to slouch on this uh, stretch, so I have to constantly remind myself, keep the upper body straight, because that's what's gonna allow you to pull um, the leg into the body. Again, that's why having a mirror available is very handy because you can kind of do those visual checks. Okay, so let's shake this out. Bring it back over. Last stretch before we get into it. Okay, great, so let's get right into our workout. I'm gonna move this mat out of the way. So each one of these exercises is gonna be performed for a total of 20 seconds. So the first exercise is a plank jumping jack. You can do this from your hands or your elbows because I'm on a hard surface, I'm gonna go from my hands. And just go something like this, same thing as a normal jumping jack, except we're on the ground, so here we go. Good, moving right into a reverse lunge. And I'm alternating legs. And again, I'm trying to get in as many reps as I can in these 20 seconds. On these, I'm coming right down to 90. Okay, good, right into push-ups. Right, right into my vertical mountain climbers. Good, right into dips. Great, I'm back up, right onto my squats. So sometimes when I do these, I like to just let my hands drop. I find that it takes a little bit of pressure off my back, but if you wanna have your hands here, that's fine too. Oh 
Okay, now we're gonna get right into pull-ups. So, actually I'm gonna get a little sip of water. If you're somebody that doesn't need assistance doing pull-ups, you don't need the band, but I wanna demo, pull-ups are the best exercise for the back. So in order to build up to doing them unassisted, this is an easy way to do it. I'm just gonna take a resistance band and hook it around the side of the bars. Then I'm gonna take this band, I'm gonna hook it under my knee. For today's workout, I'm gonna be doing an underhand pull-up at home. You can choose whatever variation of pull-ups you wanna do. All right, let's go, 20 seconds starts now. Okay, good. All right, so now we're gonna start right over with plank jumping jacks. Take a second, take a nice deep breath. And let's get right into it. Round two, let's go. Good, right into your reverse lunge. Good, shake your legs out, let's get right into our push-up. By now you should be sweating and breathing hard. Right, right back up on our feet for vertical mountain climbers. Good, check out right into dips. So at this point, I'm winded, but I'm mentally, I'm in the game. I'm not thinking about the fact I'm tired. I'm just thinking about completing every single exercise at 100%. All right, I'm out of my dips, right into my squats. All right guys, we're getting into our pull-ups. By this stage in the game, you should be a little bit tired or a lot tired, that's okay, because after this exercise, we're gonna take a short break. So I'm just gonna get this resistance band right under my knee, take a deep breath, get my hands in position, and I am ready to go. Here we go. So now let's take 30 seconds break, grab some water if you need it, which I'm sure you do, I know I do, and just take a couple of few really deep breaths of air, get the oxygen moving back through the body. This is not the time to start thinking, oh, I'm so tired, oh, this is so hard. You just have to keep yourself in that zone. This is why I'm doing this, this is why I'm here, this is why it's important for me to see this through. Deep breath of air. 
Okay, and then we're ready. Let's go. All right, right into our reverse lunge. Again, as your body starts to get tired, remember that you need to be thinking about your form. I don't wanna let my knee come out past my toe. So if I need to slow down to make sure that doesn't happen, that's fine. All right, right into our push-ups. My hands out wide, here I go. up for mountain climbers. I'm sorry, vertical mountain climbers. You can tell I'm starting to get tired. That's okay though. That's why we're doing this. I'm in great shape and this is winding me and that's because I'm pushing myself. If you're not winded, you're not pushing hard enough. All right, let's get into our dips. I'm gonna take one deep breath. The oxygen back in the muscle. Feet are out, let's do it. I'm back on my feet, up into the squats. Here we go. Again, I like to put my hands between. Just take a little pressure off my back. You can do the same if you want. A more advanced version of this movement would be a plyometric squat. So if you wanna go ahead and do that at home, feels right to you, go ahead. Good, let's move right into our pull-ups. I'm gonna get a quick little sip of water. Hook my band under my knee. And we're off. Okay, so that's it for the body weight circuit. We're gonna move right into core. All right, so each one of these exercises is gonna be performed for a total of 20 seconds, starting with a sitting twist. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna bring my feet out and I'm just gonna twist this way. 20 seconds, here we go. Making sure you're breathing. If you wanna do these with a medicine ball, if you have a medicine ball available, that's fine. For these purposes, this is just a body weight circuit, so we're gonna do it without. All right, moving right into a plank. Myself into my plank position, here we go. Making sure that my stomach is not dropping down, staying nice and tight. You should feel shaky when you're in this position from the workout that we just did. That's good, that means you worked hard. All right, moving right into butt ups. I'm gonna get right down on the ground, my feet into position, and actually, because this is a thin mat and I'm on hard ground, I'm gonna double up on my cushioning. Okay, here we go. Straight up to the sky, keeping your legs as straight as possible.
All right, rolling this mat back out. We'll be right into my heel touches. So I'm just gonna come up, tuck my chin, and touch side to side. You just, you wanna get and make sure that you're staying nice and tight. When you do core exercises, really make every single rep count. Engage your abs, think about squeezing. All right, next up, modified V-sits. So I'm gonna come out this way and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cross my legs back and forth. Now, I'm doing this with my hands up here. If you need to, go ahead and put your hands behind you. Most important thing is just to keep your legs straight and your core engaged. All right, next up, plank step ups. I'm back in my plank position. This is gonna get right into my serratus. So I'm in my plank position and I'm bringing this hand right underneath my shoulder. I'm coming up, going right back down on that side, alternating sides, coming back down, up, up, up. Whew. Definitely feel that burn. All right, we're gonna move right into our plank walkout. So from this position, this is my starting position. I'm just gonna inch my elbows out in front of me, a couple of inches, and then I'm gonna come right back a couple inches. You're gonna feel this burn like crazy. The key is to not take big steps, take tiny, small steps. That's what really is gonna give you that nice contraction. Okay, right into our cross crunch, I'm back on my butt. Here we go. So this is my starting position. My chin is down and I'm just reaching. I'm never relaxing my abs. My starting position, my abs are already contracted. Some people, you'll see them do this. That's not what we're doing here. You're staying in that contracted position. This should burn. Your abs should never be relaxing. Good, right into a bicycle crunch. Here we go. Now, some people do these, they cross over. I like to go elbow to knee, same side. I just, I feel it can work so much better when I do it this way. This is the way I have all my clients do it as well. I'm trying to get right into those obliques. All right, right into my shoulder bridge. So working the low back and the glutes now. I wanna make sure that we're bringing balance to the core. I've got my feet right underneath me. I'm just coming up, down slow, right back up. You really just wanna squeeze right in your glutes. It's important when you're working the front of the body with core, you work the back of the body as well. Otherwise, you can create rotation in the hips that'll create a lot of issues for your lumbar. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna go with our quadrupled alternating. I'm just gonna come out. My hand is straight in front of me. My foot is straight behind me. My glutes are flexed, coming right down. Coming right out on the other side, same thing. Again, if you have a mirror, it's gonna make this so much easier. I can't see myself, so I'm hoping that everything is in the position it should be in, pointed toe. And you should feel this squeeze right through your glute, right in your obliques. All right, we're getting right back into our sitting twist. Round two. So round two, I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit. All right, moving right into my plank. Back on my elbows. Here we go. Keeping my body completely in a straight line, not dropping down, just right here, squeezing my core. And I'm a little, I'm, sh I'm a little shaky on these, so I'm assuming you are too, that's okay. Stay in the position. We're so close to being done with this workout. All right, right into our butt ups. Notice I'm not taking a lot of time between exercises. I'm just getting myself right into position. 
double up my mat. Here we go. right into my heel touch. Here I go, my starting position. My abs are already flexed and we're touching. You're gonna get out of this ab workout what you put into it. Again, focus on the contraction of the abs. Do not use momentum to do the exercise. You don't wanna just be swinging your body. You really wanna be just contracting every single rep. Right into our modified V-sit. So you know what? I'm gonna bring my mat up under my butt. If you're on a hard surface, you can do the same. All right. Right into our plank step ups. I'm back into my plank. Here we go. into a plank walkout, give it a breath, here we go. Just moving out little by little, each side. If I go out on one side, I'm coming back on that same side. All right, right into my cross crunch. My feet are right underneath me. Here we go. Again, I am contracted. I am not relaxing my abs. Squeezing on every single rep. Right into a bicycle crunch. Again, get your legs. Don't shortcut it. Get your legs all the way out. Throw your legs all the way out there. Into our shoulder bridge. Actually, so if you feel ten more tension in your low back like I just did, move your butt down towards your heel. That's gonna put way more tension in the butt than it is in your low back. You can make those slight adjustments. I'm just squeezing every time right through my glutes. Driving all my weight right through my heel. All right, right into our quadruple alternating. So, Hands are right underneath my shoulders. Here we go. Squeezing. These do not have to be done fast. These should be done at a pace where you can really feel the squeeze. I'm feeling a squeeze in my delt. I'm feeling a squeeze in my glute. All right, guys, that's it for our ab circuit. That's it for our workout. 